Hey everybody and welcome back to Draki Cup 8. We're going to continue our coverage of the group stage. We are moving on to, I think, the last game that we'll cast from the group stage, which is going to be myself versus Marchwaden. Galzian versus Conef, pretty fun matchup right here. I have our info.txt, of course. I'm going to be picking Galzian first. Marchwaden picks Conef. I have the map picks. So I'm going to take Firebase Krill. Uh, this is a map that I feel decently comfortable on. Sandscrim for Fab coming out immediately for Marchwaden. I actually thought about this one for a while, though, uh, but Firebase Krill just seemed like... It spoke to me somehow. I, I couldn't exactly tell you why I picked this. I was thinking to myself that, um, like, Torrent Crater would be a good map for me, but this one gonna be the one that I ended up going with. Looks like this is a Rail Rush. So we do have Sandskimmer Fab on the way. PC is moving out across the field. Nothing new there. You've seen me do this a million times, but March Walden with the Sandskimmer Tech first. He's gonna start moving down with this PC. And uh, as I recall, this is quite an interesting game because Marchbond is not going to play this meta, so you notice he keeps that base runner. Uh, he doesn't have, you know, RUs to really get a tech just yet, he's going to be pretty late onto that. But he is building blast drones with this base runner, so there's a chance that he can get a good uh, hit on my Sandskimmer blob and maybe take me out of the game here. Either that, or he can attempt to, you know, look at killing the eco. I'm wondering how I would fare if I was going ref mode first against this. This might actually be pretty bad for me, but the first game are going to pop out, I see two for my opponent. Gonna choose to back away here. Um, I don't really want to try and take a fight where I have a numbers disadvantage. And he can kind of try and press the issue, but because I am moving toward my carrier, I probably won't lose anyone here. And uh, at this point, we can just match the skins. We can go to PC, but probably getting the tech is best. Um, so I think I'll be looking to get Railgun tech in just a moment here. Not to mention, that means that if I do manage to like win this trade here, I'll be able to pressure with like a Rail Rush right off the back of this. See, so yeah, a little quick drop comes out here, Railgun Fab is on the queue, and now I see that Blast Drone for the first time. I'm obviously a little bit sweating here, because clearly if the Blast Drone comes over the hill and kills me, I'm going to be in a bad spot. But March Bottom trying to go in for the Salvager, going to lose a skim for nothing there. Bit of an unfortunate trade for him. No LDMs on the back line, so he does need to deny this. This is good for him. Uh, but I am going to have the tech advantage slightly. Fleet Cap 45 coming out for me now. He already has it, so I was Fleet Capped for just a moment there, it looks like. But I don't have the money anyway, so this is maybe not a huge problem. But I'm I'm very aware of that Blast Drone. Okay, Blast Drone actually going to come over the hill now, but the Sandstorms are split nicely. It's going to detonate early, so that relieves a lot of pressure for me now that that Blast Drone is out of the equation. A little bit of a mismanagement of it then. Skin's going to try and trade in anyway, but this has to be a mistake, because they are obviously fighting, you know, underneath that carrier where they're going to take a lot of damage. But the Blast Runner has another Blast Drone coming out, so this isn't over yet. I'm gonna grab myself a bit of high ground here. I do manage to kill off that skin that was wounded. Assault Rail is being produced from the PC also. But March 1, I'm gonna trade that one back. I still have even numbers, it looks like. Yeah, we both have five. Blast Drone's gonna be out in a second, but the Assault Rail gun will be done too. Now, notice how I'm moving around on this side. The Assault Rail never wants to jump over the hill right onto the skins. It wants to, you know, get a bit of distance away from them. Now that's got high ground here in a pretty nice spot, I just have to worry about this Blast Drone. It looks like it is gonna be killed there. And a really cool idea for Marchwan, but it doesn't look like it's paid off terribly well so far. He does manage to kill that Assault Rail, but it looks as though the skins will be hunted down mostly on the back line. He may actually get these guys out though, it's a little bit late to start the chase there. This battle, by the way, I just want to point out, is actually somewhat important for me. I think that if I manage to win these games, I'll guarantee myself seed 2, but if I don't, I'll get seed 3. If I get seed 3, that means that um, I still will face A-game in the finals, but I won't have to face uh, Marchwaden, actually. You know, the player I'm playing against right now, until I reach... Well, actually, potentially never, because if he uh, faces against A-game and loses, I won't ever have to face him. If he faces against A-game and wins, I won't have to face him until the finals. So this is actually kind of an important match for me. And yeah, Arsava, you did win. I'll, I'll be DMing the keys to people in just a moment, um, after the last games are done, so probably in about an hour from now. Well, you know, the stream chat doesn't know, so or at least some of them don't, so... Never want to spoil the games. Part of being a good caster. Assault Railgun here, allowing the Sandskims to trade really, really well. I have my second PC coming out as well, but March 1 still doesn't. He's got an armor too instead. But there's no tech, right? So this could still be, like, really difficult for, uh, March 1 here. Like, obviously, if... If I manage to take a really nice skimmer trade here, I may just kill that PC.
Well, I never said that I didn't know that I won or not, right? I certainly do. And in this game, by the way, you should note at this point, it definitely looks like I'm gonna win, so... Because the skims are dead on the front line here, this PC just getting kind of hunted down. Not really much chance that it's going to get out here. March 1, if I remember correctly, is going to GG in like 2 seconds because he, he sees the writing on the wall. Obviously, if you didn't know this, if Gelsian or Conf loses that PC in the early game, that's definitely game over. And yeah, down goes the PC. Going to be pretty, pretty darn hard for March 1 to hold on to this point. He sees that, so he is going to choose to surrender right there. So game one goes to me, but it was a really interesting one. I think uh, that was quite a cool idea that March Baden had, but unfortunately not quite able to execute it right. And we'll jump into game two. Quick note about this thing though, like obviously I don't want when you're playing a game, I don't want, or sorry, when you're watching a game, I don't want anyone who's watching to know who wins already, right? Um, and so yeah, obviously I do know who wins this game, for example, right? Because I played it. I actually know often who wins the other games too, because as the tournament organizer as well, I can't cast these things live, so sometimes I have to like see brackets already knowing who wins. But you know, that doesn't mean I have to tell everybody else, because obviously that would kind of spoil the experience for them, so. No reason to go ahead and do that, it's better to just, you know, leave it up in the air. I never act like I don't know, of course, but you know, I, I pretend as though, um, I don't really pretend anything, I just kind of try not to tell my, uh, tell my stream at all, like, who wins the game. Oh hey, it's March 1. We're just gonna go ahead and cast this one solo though, and I think this is the last replay from the group stage that we're gonna go into, unless there was another one that someone wanted us to take a look at. If so, you can say it on stream, DM me, whatever, and we will take a look at it if we like. Well, I never say that I don't know, because obviously I do, right? But you know, you, you can't spoil the you can't spoil the experience. That'd be really that'd be really unfortunate. So I always make it out that um even though I do know, I'm not going to let you have any idea. And sometimes, even when I know that someone's going to lose the game, you know, I'll talk about how, like, yeah, it looks like he's winning here, because clearly, it does. I mean, he definitely is in the winning position, so... I guess that's all I have to say about that. Anyway, map 2 going to be on Kalash Teeth. I did want to talk about the pick here just a little bit. March Warden has the map pick, um, so he can pick whatever map he likes. Obviously, in group stage, there's no banning. And so looking back on things, I probably shouldn't have gone for uh, Galzian here, because I did kind of know he was going to go for Kalash Thief. And Galzian, if they get ahead, they can, um, you know, they can still win, obviously. It's not like, just by faction matchup, you lose here or something like that. But I definitely am going to have trouble with uh, kind of Siege on this map if I let the game go that long. Uh, and I'm not going for a Rail Rush, so I'm not trying to finish the game out immediately. So either I probably should have done that, or I should have gone for Con F or Coalition instead here, but, um... Gonna be playing Galzine instead. And this this game, if I remember, is a really interesting one, so, uh... Like, back and forth, like, 20 times, if I remember correctly. But it looks like March 1 does have the push on me so far. He's gone for only Sand Skimmers, though. He does have a Soul Chip Tech coming, but it's a little bit late. First soul chip gonna finish for me though, so I do have the advantage in timing there, and armored unit defense is one gonna come out before I build my second. This means that I do have control over the field for just a moment here. Fleet cap gonna have to come out for uh, March 1 pretty early here, so I think he'll be low on money. Yeah, he won't be able to build in the soul chip right when the tech is done, so this could be a little bit rough for him. Now, this number of skins would be able to kill one of soul chip on its own, but if I bring it up here properly, I should be able to win there. A little bit of mismicer for me to start off the fight, but this is still okay for me. He does trade one for zero so far, but like this is kind of a questionable movement of the skimmers here. So you're gonna move down toward the carrier there. The soul chips have high ground now, and they're going to uh, manage to take a very nice trade right there. One of them almost dying, but not quite. So this is quite bad for March Warden so far. Question is, uh, what can I do off the back of this? And I believe, if I remember correctly, I go for ref mode here. I probably shouldn't have, you know? Yeah, see, the PC's headed back, uh, and Refinery Tech is gonna be on the way soon. But, like, looking at this, I have a really big advantage in Assault Chip numbers. I could probably hold him off of 2 base for a really long time here, so this is probably a mistake. I should really just go for bringing that PC up into the front line, but, uh... Maybe I'm, like, I'm too in the mindset of playing Assault Chip first versus Coalition Salon. I've done that a lot more than against Galzian, so... A little bit of a mistake here. We do have some Sand Skimmers coming out now. Er, Sandstorm. Salvagers coming out now to fill up the next base there. Both off the carrier and the PC. 
Rift Mode about 30 seconds away. I will be much faster on the Eco, but I'm kind of letting my opponent build up a little bit of army here if I want to. And then trying to push in here, I definitely don't have time to do this. So, this is a bit of a mistake for me. To be fair though, March 1 with no armor upgrades on those Assault Ships, I would win this trade. But the Carrier can also get involved with those missiles, and at any rate, that mobility support system definitely going to be helping the Assault Ships not get traded out here, so... Probably, as I said, a bit of a mistake for me, but... I can still make this work because my tech is going to be a lot better than my opponent here. One Assault Ship going to come over here to the back line as well. Now March Button has the mobility support turned on, which is probably the right call. But it just means that he has to kind of... Well, this is a little silly. I poke in and then just immediately leave. I was hoping to try and get a bit of pressure here and make him, you know, commit some army onto that side. But now, pushing these Assault Ships back in, I should know my opponent is building defense. I didn't know about Railguns, but this was, at any rate, probably a mistake. I will kill one Assault Railgun here, though, for sure. I'm trying to split these guys so I don't take AoE. But yeah, one Assault Railgun does go down, but I lose two Assault Ships for it. Probably not worth it. I am up on a 2 base, though. Uh, and definitely quite a bit before my opponent here, so... Ref Mode just now starting for him, so that's still going to be about a minute out. Interceptor Fab on the queue for me immediately. I saw Rails, obviously, so I'm thinking that Interceptors will be a very good choice here. Um, it's always a little scary for me, though, because I'm really not very good with air. I'm sure you've noticed this if you've ever watched my, uh, my streams. <laughs> or just my games in general. Um, but, you know, I know that it's, like, on paper the right choice here, so I want to try for it anyway. This is a bit of a throw, though. Just gonna have this one assault ship kind of wander into enemy fire here, so he will probably go down now. Obviously, there's no speed advantage, so he will just be able to run me down here. Interceptor tech about 20 seconds out. It's coming out about the same time as ref mode for my opponent, actually. But he'll have a second PC faster, clearly. Now, I have obviously always an option to go for that second PC when I'm getting uh, Interceptor tech. <clears throat> um, but I chose to forgo it this time, so I'm going to be on two production lines only. It's going to be the Interceptors off the carrier and then Assault Chips off of my one PC that I've got here. And as a result, they're going to have to trade pretty well against the uh, ground army for my opponent. As you know, though, the, the ideal way to use Interceptors is really not to lose any of them most of the time. At least, definitely not in, like, the early game. These Assault Ships here seem to want to go for a bit of a push, but they're gonna back away. They, they did scout, um, Carrier Tech, though, so they should be able to see that Interceptor Fab is done. So March 1 should know about this. Uh, and given his games with A game, I imagine he'll be getting Missile Ship Fab pretty quick here, because he probably doesn't want what happened last time. Well, excuse me, hiccups. He probably doesn't want what happens last time to be repeated this time. Afterburner tech coming out for me now, as well, because I'm trying to uh, get the maximum value out of these things that I can. Actually, it's no missile ship fab, though, so he doesn't- he hasn't gone into this just yet. He still doesn't have armored unit defenses either, so I could probably win this fight if I wanted to. Both gonna back away, though, it looks like. However, these railguns here are gonna be very vulnerable, um, obviously, to the interceptors now. Yeah, one of them goes down already. Second one falls as well. Interceptor Fab then gonna come out from Arch 1. So his his answer to this is gonna be interceptors of his own, clearly. And he's gonna bring this PC forward though. This one is not gonna go uh, onto the next base. So this is kind of interesting to see from Arch 1. We do have a little bit of a backstab coming up for me as well though. Another interceptor being built though, and this is probably where this becomes a bit of an overcommit. Because I've gotten good damage already, but my opponent can easily go Interceptors as well, so probably best that I go ahead and tech into... Like, well, another PC here would probably be best, or I can go Siege. Interceptor, though, uh-oh. Yeah, that's, that's, that's Bozo's Interceptors, alright. <laughs> Gonna lose one for nothing there. Yeah, so I do start up that second PC now. I have to move these, uh, Salvagers out of the way, right? Oh my gosh. Is he not gonna finish the kill? This is terrible for me to just, like, leave him here. Yeah, one of them will go down. Interceptor, meanwhile, gonna actually fall to the PC, so this is, again, not terribly good, but my thought is that if I can kill this PC, I'll be really happy. Assault Chips there trying to hit the Assault Rails from far away. But a lot of air units being lost here for me, and this is really quite unnecessary. So, you know, you hate to see it. Actually, I lost all of the Interceptors there, wow. That's, uh... Yeah, that's, that's me, alright. That's something that only Bozo could pull off. 
Assault Railgun is going to go down here, though, and there's not really much to finish off these Assault Chips, so... To be fair, this kind of looks okay still, um, but definitely, like, I should have come out from that a lot more ahead than I was. I was definitely quite a bozo throw. Assault Rail going to go down there, actually. We managed to trade each other. Yeah, he is, actually, I think. No, he's building Assault Rails, I guess. Yeah, with this carrier, I'm going to start trying to fill out my uh, third base, maybe, but I'm actually building an interceptor right now, so that is gonna that is gonna limit me with money. This is another PC for March 1, though, so he's actually gonna get up on the three base faster than me at this rate. And that really shouldn't be allowed to happen. I, I should have, uh, if I had controlled right there, I could have killed this PC, actually. Um, and I actually still had, like, three interceptors alive as well. And those, of course, would have been really, really nice to, uh... Oh my gosh, Cable's playing bracket games, dude! In that case, we're gonna cast them right after this. Anyway, uh... <laughs> Yeah, so I should have had those interceptors still alive there, in which case I would have been able to kill off his PC probably. It's a little bit of a little bit of a misplay for me there. But now March 1 is gonna drive like into the pocket here, which is a little bit questionable. Um Yeah, he's gonna get deep in here. He's got like two assault railguns, but that's it. So this is definitely not exactly the play that he wants to make. I just have to be careful I don't lose this interceptor to the PC's anti-air. Wow. I'm really good with area these guys. <laughs> But these salt rails are in position here. We have another interceptor. It's gonna jump out, get a bit of damage, and then dock. Dart maneuver used, actually. That's always pretty hype to see, but one of these assault rails is gonna go down anyway. And the carrier is here, so this is like a PC really stuck in there. That was a queen sacrifice. <laughs> oh, I see, but like you're gonna lose a PC for it. Certainly it's not worth it, right? I don't know. So this was actually intentional then, this was intentional to lose the production cruiser, but... Well, you'll have two now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, that, that's gotta be a mistake in my book. Down goes the last assault rail as well, PC does fall. And the Interceptor's gonna take a bit of a trade here now, I think March 1 has Afterburner as well though, but he's out of missiles, so he kinda has to leave here, so... I mean, we'll pick off one for free. If I want to, I can come back in and catch these assault rails too, but I might have I might have not noticed that they were there. Definitely though, for sure, it's true that uh, March 1 is on better eco than me now, and he does have that kind of Siege Cruiser fab coming out. I see, he's rebuilding the PC. He knows he needed it. <laughs> anyway, uh, this will be me getting up on a three base later than him though. I do have this base fully saturated again though. But yeah, as I said before, Con of Siege is going to be the really tricky thing on this map. This is one reason why I may have chosen to, uh... <laughs> yeah, Steam support is kind of silly. <laughs> you want to delete Valve, eh? <laughs> but yeah, so, this is going to be tricky because Con of Siege is going to be very, very effective on this map. March 1 probably will go for Missile Ship Fab eventually, but... He does have the interceptors for now, so it's not like I get a free pass on just killing his bases. Well, I'm not scouting with air units because I already know what I need to know, right? I mean, yeah, exactly, what's there to scout? He's got air, so if I, if I overcommit, I'll lose these guys for nothing. I already know he's on three base, so... Yeah, I can't really do anything with the air units here. Oh, wait, wait, you mean why isn't March 1 scouting? Yeah, he already knows about that as well. Well, once the air units come in and trade, the, my interceptors are going to come in and hit him, so he can't lose he can't lose interceptors that way. This is just kind of how you have to play GBG, because obviously, uh... Obviously, these interceptors are, like, real killers. So, you see, I'm actually going to take one trade here. This is because I have a missile ship on the back line. And March 1, as I said, he's going to try and come in here and trade, but this is a very nice trade for me, so I have a bit of an entrapment on him here. I should take out two, three. Yeah, three interceptors gonna go down. Four, actually, maybe. If I can catch this one. Uh oh, he's gonna fly into the missile ship. Yeah, so he's gonna lose all four interceptors there. That's gonna force him into missile ship tech for sure. Uh, cause th there's no way he gains the air superiority back after that. Um, and as for me, I still have three left, so. Uncharacteristically, I've taken quite a good trade with my, uh,. Quite a good trade for my interceptors here, but Kana Siege is out, and this barrage here just trying to dissuade me from pushing on the PC. I'm gonna have to pull back here. I do manage to get him off of second base for a bit, but it's not gonna be long. 
Defense is too going to come out for me then, because I know obviously he has kind of Siege. But this is really tricky for me. I think Siege Cruiser Fab may be a mistake. To be honest, maybe I didn't notice this actually at the time, but I should have. Precision Bombers I think would be better here, but then it's going to be tricky because once he does get Missile Ship Fab, he'll be able to fight against that. And then at that point I kind of have to go into rails, but... Siege Cruisers, they're great for fighting... They're great for fighting some units, but fighting kind of Siege, not really, because I'm not going to get kills with it very easily. So Siege Cruiser Fab is done, but it's not going to be uh, really like the best tech for me in this scenario. That being said, I do have unquestionable air superiority here, so I can go for kills here. I should really be hitting on the heavy rails, probably. Either that, or I should be trying to kill the kind of siege with these air units. Looks like that is what I'm going to go for. The ship barrage kind of misses, though. Sandskimmer's going to try and trade in here, and actually, to be fair, there's not much to stop them. There's two assault ships here, but they're going to lose... Or, he's going to lose a lot of, um... He's going to lose a lot of railguns here, actually. He may lose all of these. Uh-oh, oh jeez, oh, I'm bunching up a lot now. Oh, Boza, what are you doing? Oh no. What is this? <laughs> Didn't have to lose that, I could have gotten those guys out, but um... This kind of siege crews are nearly dead. I lost one area, it looks like, but March 1 lost one that he had rebuilt as well. Kind of siege, of course, is going to reheal. I could throw one sand skimmer to stop its healing for a little bit. But I'm at least happy that until it reheals, he can't push on me, so I'm getting a little bit of time. Precision Bomber Fab coming out for me then, so that is going to be the choice. Power 2 on the way also, because I need something to fight this kind of siege. But at this point, he's definitely heading me into my base. This is the choke point he wanted to get, and he's gotten it. If he plays this right, he should never lose it either. He can also barrage the eco just to be annoying, but... I don't think he'll get kills like that. Assault Chips as well, taking quite a nice trade here, because the Interceptors are able to trade in first. But this guy really wants to not be in there. Oh, jeez. Do I think that's a kind of siege, maybe? I don't exactly know. I'm gonna lose one air unit for nothing though, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Bomber tech is done now, so I can start building one of those if I want, but I do have a siege cruiser out also. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe I thought it was another kind of siege because I attacked it with the air units. I don't think I would have done that otherwise, but I don't know. It could be right that I'm like playing in sensors, so I don't quite see these things. This is Ship Barrage gonna come in from Archbond to try and soften me up just a little bit here, but. Oh no, he just wasted the barrage by firing one missile. Yike. <laughs> bomber gonna hit the missile ship now, but there are interceptors out here, so that bomber goes down immediately. It doesn't really get any value here. I actually am getting the ammo capacity upgrade too. But yeah, I'm gonna be able to kill the missile ship off here. My missile ships are in position too, so his interceptors can't go in here without get taking fire at least, but he definitely has, you know, interceptors to block my bombers if he needs them. So this is not terrible for uh for March Bond. He's gonna be just okay. And he still manages to hold this very important choke point. It's not gonna be easy for me to deal with these uh kind of siege cruisers. And again, you can see he trades very nicely there, manages to manages to kill two assault ships for nothing. The bomber will finish off this kind of siege cruiser, but. Then he has to dock immediately, really. Ooh. Making me nervous here, because there are interceptors out. Oh no, it's gonna go back in. Uh-oh, and what the heck is the siege cruiser doing here? Ooh. That's not really where it wants to be. Interceptor's gonna finish off this bomber. Definitely a mistake to have him moving out in the field like that. But this siege cruiser amazingly gonna get out of here, so... Well, is it? Oh my. It might just die to this barrage here. Oh, oh, oh man. It actually lives there off of 44 HP. That is quite lucky for me. Anyway, taking stock of the field now though, this is definitely March Bond's kind of win condition is to mass up kind of siege. He's got four of them now. I really can't uh, get any of them killed, really. I can't finish the kills on any of these guys. So the question is, what do I do here? Eventually, he's going to actually have a lot of damage that he can put out just by barraging. And he has that EMP upgrade now, you can see. I don't have that either. Um, bases are starting to get mined out, so we don't have a lot of CUs that we can spend here. Oh! Bomber here going to hit one of the kind of siege crews, but not the one that's damaged. 
Looks like the interceptors from March 1 are gonna try and get in here and trade too. They will kill the bomber, but they do go down for it, but that's probably worth it for him. Again, I don't really have an option to finish off these kind of siege cruisers. This is really tricky for me, and if I wait here, eventually he'll kill me. That's why that's why I'm trying to take fights at all. And uh, we were talking about this during the cast with the uh, A game, but actually missile ships are really good against Galzian Siege because they won't really die to the AoE, and they can barrage them out. So you can see here, he's gonna run through the barrage to try and get the barrage on this Galzian Siege Cruiser, and he's actually gonna kill it with these missile ships, which is really cool. I hadn't really thought of doing that before. I've used missile ships uh, on mass like this to beat um, assault cruisers before, but I, I guess, you know, in a different way, but for kind of a similar reason, they do actually beat siege cruisers sometimes like that, so kind of nicely done by him. Assault ship's gonna hit get uh, hit by the EMP as well. They're gonna take a lot of damage here. And indeed, they will go down now. Well, it looks like only one of them actually, but well, well uh, there could still be more kills here. Sandskin is running into the back line though. Don't, don't lose track of that. Okay, one more of them does get killed. Oh no, I barraged myself. I remember this happening now, actually. Sanskir is going to come in for a bit of a run by here, but they can't really attack the main base because, I mean, carriers there, of course, but also there's no salvagers left, like mining. The RUs are about to run out, so that'd be a waste of time. So instead, I'm going to try and push him off of his other bases here. But it's only two siege cruisers now, a bunch of missile ships, and a carrier against, like, a lot of Khan of Siege. There's not really much I can do about this. I don't have a frontline unit, right? Other than my carrier, I guess. I have to kind of try and swing that angle for this fight here, but it's going to be really, really tough to make this work. EMP coming out as well is going to hit all these missile ships, right? Uh, no, it actually doesn't manage to land on them, which is kind of nice for me. Bomber coming out here to try and clear out the anti-air so I can use them again, but it's not going to work, so he ends up going down. Oh no, and what are the missile ships doing here? They need to dump damage on the, uh, the kind of siege, not on the missile ships over here. So this is definitely a mistake as well. They're all going to go down for that. Sandskimmers, meanwhile, have succeeded at being pretty annoying, I guess, but they haven't really stopped the eco like I'd like them to. Uh, and meanwhile, Kana Siege here are gonna start hitting these siege cruises in a big way. This is an okay trade, though, all things considered. I need to dock this guy, though, because otherwise he's gonna die. Yeah, because he didn't kill the siege cruiser, I do manage to take out two of those Kana Siege. But he's got heavy rails, too. And obviously the siege cruisers are just still gonna do a lot of damage at this point, though. Oh, as well as that missile ship barrage. Look at the damage done being uh, dealt over here. Sanskrit is still alive on the back line doing a bit of damage, but this might just be a dead carrier over here. Yeah, it really probably should be. These kind of siege cruises on high ground as well. They have a heavy rail trailing also. And that will be the game then, as March 1 manages to bring the series 1-1. Very nicely done for him. I do still manage to secure the uh, seed 2 spot though. Um, but March 1 with a very nice, very nice play there <clears throat> uh, to manage to win this game. I still think that I was ahead after the opener, but I shouldn't have gone ref mode. I should have gone for a bunch more assault chips and tried to pressure. And then I could even transition that to rail rush if I was really feeling crazy, but that's probably not the best idea. Uh, but after I killed this um, PC here as well, I think going for rails might have been better for me. Still though, definitely some questionable air trades, uh, so I have... Definitely some, a lot to work on when it comes to using air units, I think we know that. But I don't want to take anything away from March Walden, it's very well played. And he does manage to get back into this game and take it, so. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.